done to enable collaborating between women in the workplace. Um, Tambella is going to be running the session for us, and we're going to be, as usual, picking up from both the chat sessions. So please, as the speakers or as people share their stories, um, please feel free to put your comments and issues and questions in the chat. We will make space to read them as we go along. And when we get to the discussive section of our, of, our, of our session, we will go on Facebook live stream and pick up from people who join via Facebook live stream. We also have Ntato back with us and she will give us a final feedback and tie together the discussion at the end of today's discussion. So really our aim today is for people to dive deep, dig deep, and to engage with what we learned last week so that we can apply it in our own workspaces. Um, with that, I'm gonna hand over to Tembella. Um, sorry, there's just one other thing I wanted to say. We want to ensure it is a safe space because we've encouraged everyone to develop their own stories and to share stories. So the storytelling session at the beginning will be a closed session only for the members who are on Zoom. Um, we do want to create a safe space and part of creating the safe space is holding the confidentiality of the stories that are shared um, and is holding space and not judging the stories that we hear. We are learning from our own stories and each other's stories. So that note on encouraging the safe space um, and also knowing that we're not just telling stories um, for the sake of storytelling. Ntato said last week, women being in the workplace is a political act. So we're beginning to understand that everything about the work we do and how we live is a political act. So also understanding our own stories and being able to tell them is as powerful a political act. With that, I'm gonna hand over to Tembella to introduce our first two storytellers. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm not sure if Jessica is around yet, um, but but before she can join in, I just want to, ah, there she joins, there she comes in. <laughs> so just before, before she actually, uh, uh, before I invited our, our two speakers, I was just thinking today um, about how cold it is uh, in Johannesburg. And we heard from Michelle that it's not just in Johannesburg where it is cold it's actually cold everywhere and as i was actually thinking about that i was actually thinking that you know i don't like winter um uh, I, I actually don't like it but as i was thinking about the fact that i don't like winter i also thought that this weather that we are experiencing is actually quite different from the weather that we've had uh last week so even though it was not um as cold as it is today, but you could still sit outside and enjoy the sun. And now, today when I wanted to go outside, I actually couldn't. And I was just thinking that actually, this is a sign, a sign that um, it's, a, it's a different season. Um, winter is here. And so if winter is here, it also means that those of us who like the summer and the hot summer days and all that, we can no longer be able to go outside in our nice pants and our arms outside because it's cold. And I'm sure you're wondering, oh, she's probably, she's probably going crazy. <laughs> What's that about? And I was actually thinking that, you know what? Uh, throughout this series, we've actually been talking about, you know, the new normal and whatever. So the whole story about winter and the changing season is actually to say times have changed, yeah? Times have changed for us. Times have changed for everyone, for us as women. Um, and then if that's the case, it also means that we need new strategies, we need new lenses, um, uh, we, need, we need new ways of showing up. We also need to continue with our journey of busting myths especially for us um, as, as, as women. Uh, and I was also remembering that, uh, like I think I mentioned it last week, that two years ago, we, 
we, we had this storybook does more to us, uh, perhaps as a way of promoting the book, um, where we invited women to share with us about their stories of authenticity in the workplace. And I, I keep on going back to those stories. And today I tried to look at some of those, but like I decided I'm not going to share them. But the, the, the important thing uh, from, from those stories is that women were telling us about their own struggles of working in male dominated workplaces. <clears throat> and I participated yesterday in a session that was facilitated by Ntato, which in a way for me as I was listening, I actually thought it is quite aligned to what we're talking about, that we actually need to find new ways of doing things. We need to um, empower ourselves in different ways. And, and, and for us, as Ricky was saying, our stories, telling our stories is part of, of finding ways of strategizing, uh, ways of helping us to look at things differently. And, and then today, before I invite the, the two people and all of us to actually share, I, I also thought that uh, today's session is a bit different uh, in the sense that even the people that we've invited to come and share with us, we're not necessarily asking them to share as speakers. We're just inviting them to share their experiences as we have also uh, sent out an invitation to the rest of us to say today is going to be a storytelling day. And, and I think for us to actually do that, uh, and the reason why I say it's a bit different is that it's, it's, it's not an academic exercise that we're going to have. We're actually inviting um, from all of us some level of vulnerability with, with, with one another. Uh, we are, we're inviting us to ask ourselves deep questions about the state that we are in um, as women. Dato and Lebu last week talked to us about the fact that many times it's very difficult to find collaboration amongst women. And yet collaboration as women is one of the important tools that we have that we can actually use as women to navigate the workplace. As, as I was listening to the stories and I mean that we've been sharing in the past few weeks and also the, the ones that like when I went back into the book, uh, we always keep on hearing this whole thing around being vulnerable. Uh, and uh, women finding it hard to work together and all that. And we actually need to ask ourselves deep questions as to why is it so difficult for us to, to collaborate with uh, one another as um, women? What really stands in our way? And, and, and I think that that is why I'm, I'm, I'm saying we're actually inviting a level of vulnerability because we don't just want us to have an academic discussion that is a nice to have, you know, we, we actually inviting us, each of us to actually look at ourselves and, and, and ask ourselves what stands on my way, in my way, what is, why is it that it's difficult for me to go and talk to Cheryl and say, I need your help, or can we work together here? But most importantly, we, we actually asking us to explore together so once we've surfaced those underlying barriers, what is it that we can actually do differently, both as individuals, but also as a, as a collective? Uh, there's, there's a book we came across with uh, Cher last year, talks about bad ass girls, sorry for the language. Uh, but I actually think that <laughs> if we're going to thrive in this new normal, we need to be those kinds of girls who are actually saying, yes, we know the stories that have been told, but that is not the story that we'll be working around with as we enter our new normal. On that note, I'm inviting um, Pindip. Okay, I'm, I, 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 I did mention that we are not going to introduce people because the introductions also kind of make the space feel formal, and today is not a formal space. Uh, Pindi had gone through some very interesting um, times in the workplace. She was one of the women, by the way, that we had actually interviewed um, when we, when we uh, uh, put together that book. And, I, and, and, and it's actually very interesting that her outlook has actually changed from that, but we are not going to talk about that. I'm just going to invite Pindi to share her story 
of working with women. And then after Pindi Jess will come in uh, and she will also share her story. And we are hoping that you will, if, if there is anything that props up in your mind as they are sharing their story uh, right on the chat, uh, but also bring it back here to the discussion. So Pindi, the, the floor is yours. I don't know that we talk about the flaws on virtual meetings. Well, I don't know if it really matters whether it's a floor or a space or platform. Good afternoon, ladies. Or oh, is it more evening? It's hard when everybody else is muted, then you, you can't get any feedback. Good afternoon. But hi, please. Yeah, hi, that's a lot better. And please don't make me speak to only your pictures. Let me see a few faces as well. And um, I have, what, five minutes, Miranda? Yes, because we want to invite other people as well to share, but let's see. Okay, so I'm trying to time myself. So in five minutes, geez, let me see how much I can try and share with you ladies but and just to emphasize that I'm speaking here as myself in my personal capacity I don't represent any employer I don't represent any pre current or previous my views are entirely mine based on my on my own experiences and how I actually interpret them so in my working life which is something around like 24 years or so. I have worked with different, with both genders. I've worked with men, I've worked with women. And I've actually had great, um, great relationships with both genders, with both men and with both women. And I've also had challenging relationships as well with both genders, with both um, men and women. But I think the, the focus of, of this discussion is around the women and, and the working relationships and how we could, uh, I suppose, work together to, 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 to make the working space better for women. So I've, I've reported to four women in my working life and two were great working relationships and two were not so great. And, and, and probably the reason, okay, uh, Tembila says I've changed my views. <laughs> the experiences have changed, I think. I, 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 my views have not necessarily completely changed, right? They may have shifted here and there, but I'll just touch briefly on my experience. But, and, and, and perhaps to say, what I found was you, you find a woman in leadership and they, they are either ch they are challenged and what I found is with the two that I, that I felt were not so great. The reasons for, for the challenging relationships were really mostly about personal deep-seated issues that they are struggling with in their own lives and they had very little to do with work. But unfortunately, they manifest in the work environment. And, and then you find the women around you or around this leader woman. They position themselves either for or against you or the leader. And the reasons are very different. What I found was, and, and in some of these cases, it's a matter of the politics of the stomach. Because if I must preserve my job, then I'll support the woman who's in power. Because then that way I can keep my job. And in that way, I can also stay safe and happy at work. And, and so I, I found spaces where women would, well, either maliciously or not maliciously, but 
you would find that they take information and they would feed it to, to this woman in power who then uses it against the people that he seemingly has an issue with. And, and, and again, if you try to understand their behavior, it also has to do with trying to be aligned to the right person or trying to be aligned politically to the correct person. So two issues for me, it's um, issues of the stomach and it's about being politically aligned to the correct person. But I honestly think that at, at the bottom of how women behave in the workplace, it has to do with their own internal issues. If you're not a happy person, for whatever reason, if you have issues that you have not dealt with that bug you, you're not confident about yourself because a whole lot of those issues have to do with self-confidence. They have to do with feeling insecure with the women that you work with, either because you think they seem to be more powerful or they seem to challenge you and therefore you feel a bit shaken by all of that or whatever the reason might be. It's usually things that are within the person that they have not whether they are informed by historical experiences on their part or whatever the case is, and they are then therefore not able to handle them in a manner that is conveyed, that, that makes sense in the workplace. And I also just wanted to, to, to highlight that um, it, it then becomes a matter of the environment and what the environment, I need to stop this before it makes noise for everybody. So it, it becomes a matter of what the environment allows and enables, because there are certain environments that are very deliberate about what kind of behaviors are allowed in this kind of workplace. And anybody that starts to behave like that, they get challenged and they, and they are channeled correctly, uh, coached or whatever, whatever support um, mechanisms are available in the organization. And, and for some, it's just, it's just made clear that kind of behavior doesn't get tolerated. And people will either also, depending on how much they can value their job, they either conform or they leave. Um, but you, don't, you also don't get a whole lot of organizations that are prepared to confront that kind of behavior and say, no, this is not acceptable in this place. And, and yeah, so I think my, my five minutes is up. So let me leave it at that and just summarize it by saying, uh, it's really about, if, if, it's a, if it's a person, because by the way, I've also experienced this with men, women that are not necessarily in power, that are colleagues, but that probably think that stabbing other people behind is their way to go up the ladder. And, and, and as I said, it's, um, you, you get it with men as well. However, our discussion today is focused on women. So let, let, let me stop at that. Thank you, Pindi. Um, I will not ask any questions at, at, at this point. Uh, just to mention um, that uh, when, when Pindi ex experienced uh, some of the challenges that she alluded to without divulging <laughs> much information. She was actually quite a senior person uh, in, the, in the organization. I know that I keep on hearing that uh, most of the people that really struggle in organizations are people that are, that, that are well, I guess it's different things because one time you hear people saying those who don't have power or who don't have positions of power are really struggling. But like, I think it's actually quite important to mention that. And, and, and then for me, like again, listening to that, it's actually something that, that is quite interesting in the sense that from what we've been hearing, uh, women always uh, face these challenges from both women and from, from men as well. And of course, the big dis, dis, uh, disappointment is that uh, a lot of people would say, I, I would have thought that I would get more support um, from other women. 
Uh, let me not go into detail with that. And uh, let me invite uh, Jessica to come and share her own story, the story that she wanted to share. And then I'm not sure whether there is any, oh, people are not asking, are not active today on the chat. So please, if you have questions that you want to put out perhaps to Pindi or, 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 or Jessica, please uh, write on the, on the chat or anything that resonates with you. Jessica? Jessica, you on mute? <laughs> can you hear me? Yes, there we can. Hi, everyone. Um, Pindi, we didn't compare notes, but it sounds like you were reading my notes. <laughs> I'll try and be a little bit. Uh, so first of all, my name is Jessica. I am not one of those women that belong to this group. So I thought way back, I've always been that person. Let me give you a bit of more context and who I am and where I'm coming from and um, why I had to share the story for me was from a different angle because it really traumatized me. I, I never thought that I would be traumatized the way, even when I still think about it or talk about it, the trauma is still, is still in, my, in my body, I feel it. It wasn't a big deal, but the fact that, you know, I watched it and I was very conscious of what was happening, it was quite, so I'm gonna be very specific. I do ask again that we keep this, um, we keep the space safe, particularly for me. My context, like I said, I run a woman-owned company. Um, I have um, three business partners. Um, so since the age of 29, we built this company from just the three of us. We now have about 50 people. Um, it's a management consulting firm. So, so that gives you the context, the power dynamics here of the story. So the story for me happened quite recently that while well, we still have the client and you know as a as a management consulting firm you can imagine the business model is very simple you do a proposal you walk in there and you do the job and you walk away so abuse is normal for us it's very normal for for people in corporate to blame to abuse consultants it's very normal we start off with and when i say normal i think you, you understand we start off with an engagement where everybody likes you, you are bringing a, you're going to be bringing something new they don't understand. And when you socialize everybody and once you're in the middle of everything, they start, start reflecting on, we don't need you, we can do this ourselves. And eventually the end becomes not a very nice end. So that, that's, just, that's just the life cycle of what a consultant's engagement uh, looks like. And when things go wrong at the end, they always blame us. So this is, it's quite normal. Now in this context, um, it was a CIO. I'm, 40, I'm 42 years old. And I was also 42 years old, black woman, beautiful woman. And I, I'm in a position in my life where whenever I see black women, I want to do my best and I'm very unapologetic about it in making sure that we support them. And this is how I came into this as well. So the proposal or the engagement was that we were supposed to assist, it was a new division, a technology division, and we were helping her to set up a, a target operating model. So quite a big uh, initiative that we were doing. And we specifically came in to do the organizational design and the whole change and setting up that, that, uh, that engagement. And who, who, the person that brought us into that, I'm also just going to start bringing in, I, I happen to have listened to last, week, uh, last week's conversation. Again, the person that brought us into this initiative was a male who has been in our journey, has been our supporter and an advocate of our business for more than 15 years. You know? So we came in with someone that supports what we do. We did the proposal, it was a big project. And with that project, the idea was we're gonna set up the meeting for a year, the, the, the engagement for a year, and then we'll have a man, an engagement, a managed service engagement thereafter. I'm highlighting it because I'm, I'm trying to, to, to make you see the impact as well of these kind of behaviors, that there's even such a huge financial impact to it as well, you know? Um, so when we were done, when we were in, when we were busy with the proposal, which we did get the job, but when we were getting the job, it started being the they started managing the scope down, and it was going down, and it's just I didn't understand it, and 
I started engaging with this with the black woman. And when I was engaging with her, she was very she was very quick to criticize everybody. She she had ma mainly male uh, peers around her and she criticized them so much. She had no understanding of the environment that she was in. She walked in as this very smart black girl who knows it all. And she really belittled people. And I watched that. So I'm, I'm gonna cut the details of what really transpired because things even got physical. There were lawyers that were um, um, involved in it. Um, against me so uh, somebody had attacked me and my business partners literally came in um they they supported the whole thing and this woman actually marched got our team my team and marched them out so that embarrassment of something that we were delivering and doing everything but the way she was trying to show her power and being so irrational in that whole process it just didn't make sense but anyway she marched our team out out of the building in front of everybody. That shame that she was bringing, not bringing understanding context and all of that. And during that, that time, um, I don't know, but I mean, I, I'm quite a spiritual person. And when we started the project, my one friend who, whom I start, she also has her own company. We started the, the, the project together and we kind of knew that something was gonna happen. When, when we had the altercation uh, uh, with, in this initiative, instead of rushing in and trying to do everything, we literally retreat, we, we, we went back, we, had, we went away and we, we went for a day and started praying. That whole day we prayed and we prayed and then on, and the lawyers were busy handling everything else. Um, so again, when, we were, when I was going through this traumatic experience, the first thing and first understanding what was happening, I went into my spiritual uh, 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 space going back to that and really watching everything out. Is there a question? Oh, so, so I went there into the, into my prayer closet and, 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 and I could, and, and, and when you, when you are experiencing something this traumatic, you tend to want to personalize it. You tend to think it's about you and not understanding that environment, but actually, and, and remember this, because it's a short engagement, I don't have the luxury of being in a corporate and understanding the dynamics and understanding who plays who with what. So you want, you, you want to personalize it. You think it's all about you. But, but when you go back and you reflect and you've got the right support structure. So to cut a long story short, we went back there to the, to, to, to the project. Um, what came out of that? So we then switched, uh, my white partner then took over. And when she took over, you need to now understand I'm the only specialist in the organization that can do the work that we were doing and we're doing exceptionally well. The type of deliverables that we're doing were even beyond a, an organization like Accenture. But what was interesting was we then decided, my partner then decided, we had honest conversations to say there is something wrong here and we don't know, but we can see that she has issues with black people, even though she's black. We, she, we had monthly meetings with her, which be, were, then became weekly meetings. But now my white partner started having meetings. When she was having meetings with this woman, I literally did all the work behind the scenes and I would give her the work the, the, the uh, two hours before and I will prep her on what to say. The first meeting they had, she literally presented all my work and everything. And this black lady kept on saying, wow, this is the first time we see such progress. This is the first time since you started this project, I can see the light. She's never touched anything. So it went on and on, but we were very clear. But I mean, that, 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 that time, that whole time, my team and I, I, I was hurt so much and everybody was hurt. Even my white partner couldn't understand that. How can somebody be putting her at a pedestal whereas she knows nothing about what's happening, but the fact that she's the one presenting and she's the one who's doing all this work or it looks like it's her that's doing the work. So we had to do that for the sake of just getting paid and finishing the project. Um, to cut, so to, 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 I'm not gonna get into the details now, I'm gonna try and stop here, but to summarize for you, what played out for me was it really, I was watching what beliefs and I think, um, uh, the earlier speaker spoke about the personal deep-seated uh, issues. I was watching them playing out. 
Um, I watched how she even had, I mean, one of her team members, a guy, a black guy that she had hired, actually sexually assaulted. He tried to assault my one partner, my one uh, team member, but we were quite strong. We were really protecting each other. But then he was eventually fired, but she enabled. So I watched this woman also creating an enabling environment for even someone who has a history of sexual assault, but she, she put that, that person in her space. Um, what was also said was how she didn't understand the politics. She was going around attacking all the white people and, not, and, and just because they were complying with her. They were complying with her saying yes or no, but eventually they got her kicked out of the organization. She was not understanding that you are, the minute, I mean, there are dynamics, you may have a power position, but you also have this white person who's watching and they will do things. So be smart in how you navigate um, uh, your way around just because you have a power, uh, you have a position, but you, you still don't understand how to navigate your way. So you have this position and a very high position, but you, you, you are emotionally not matured. And that for me was something that I, I picked up. That later on, we got to understand that she went through a, a very traumatic divorce and it was playing out. The way she was managing herself, the way that when we came with the, from a legal point of view, she got so traumatized and kicked out everybody, but she was actually thinking of what she was going through and now being irrational in her decision making and how she handled everything else. And like I said, um, there, was, there were big financial impact on our side. It was an enabling uh, environment for other perpetrators to be playing in that space and taking advantage of her because she did have friends that she started giving business to and we got to lose some of the work from there. Needless to say, she's out of the, of the, of the organization and uh, we are still there and have more business from that. Um, so you can imagine why this was traumatic um, to watch my fellow black sister wanting to have a white woman speak to her and manage the whole project while I did all the work behind the scenes. And you can imagine what I had to handle the team that I'm leading now watching me having to pull down and what are they seeing. And, but then again, I was also surrounded and am and, and surrounded by a very strong team that understands. I mean, it's, it's a very diverse team and we have very honest conversations about these type of things. And we were very aware of what we were dealing with. And yeah, and that's my story. Wow, Jess, thank you so much for, for sharing that. Um, I'm sitting here and I'm actually thinking uh, I wish I can do, I, I mean, I, I could say the same thing that one of our speakers uh, said, that I wish I can um, have that woman in front of us here yeah, and <laughs> do something. But of course, the truth is that um, it's very easy to actually look at these situations and, and, and just blame, you know, the, the, the other person. It's, it's actually an easy way out. Um, I, I, I like what you were saying, just in terms of saying, sometimes we tend to look at these situations and think that they are just about us. And, and in, 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 I was actually thinking that this, this is actually speaking to one of the thoughts that I had, uh, a, a, a thought that was, um, uh, that came from the conversation we had last year when uh, one of the people or the, the facilitator in that meeting was actually saying, uh, we have believed um, the story that suggests that as, as, as women, what we go through or the experiences that we go through in the workplace are merely individual experiences. They are isolated uh, problems when in actual fact, they are, um, I mean, our, our experiences are connected. You started by saying it, 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 it seems as if um, P, you and Pindi had actually shared the notes. I know that Pindi didn't divulge a lot of information about uh, what actually happened to her. Um, and and in, in, I mean, uh, in, in, in the organization that she was working for. But, but, but I think the point I want to emphasize is the fact that, uh, yes, they may, these experiences may seem like they're individual isolated experiences, but they are not. 
uh, and, and I think both of you had started talking about some of the, 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 the issues that, are, uh, that, that actually put us to, or, or that, that, that put women to go through those kinds of um, experiences. There, there are personal issues, I think both you and um, been raised issues around the personal issues, self-confidence, insecurity. Uh, and of course, we need to ask ourselves, why? Where is that coming from? Uh, because once we begin to ask those questions, we get closer to, to the reasons uh, why we are in those kind of um, situations. Uh, it's actually interesting that I think in both cases, uh, in both of your stories, what we had seen was that this was um, not only women to women uh, shaming and, you know, like, um, uh, yeah, kind of a thing. It was also black on black, uh, how should I put it, violence, or uh, I don't know what is a softer word of actually putting it, because in a way it is actually violent, eh? because <laughs> we may not want to call it violence, but it is actually violence. Um, but, but, but also like the same thing that we keep on seeing where people begin to protect males uh, instead of protecting one another as women, we actually tend to protect males. Uh, uh, I think it was Pindi was talking about the issue of um, the environment that sometimes over and above like the individual experiences that people may actually be going through, there is an element of the work environment that actually promotes this kind of behavior. And, and I think for me, as we reflect on why we are here or why do we see this kind of behavior amongst us, we also need to uh, make sure that we also look at that because there are things that are actually um, fueled by the culture in a particular organization or when those in power don't want to actually do what is expected of them to do. So um, uh, the aim is not for me to actually repeat what uh, Jess and Pindi have shared with us. I think the issue is to actually try and see uh, 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 whether what they are sharing actually resonates with you. But before I actually um, uh, go into the actual questions, I want to check from you um, uh, whether uh, there is anything that, like as you're listening to uh, both uh, uh, sisters, whether there's anything that is actually coming up for you that you want to share with us? Mandela, we've got a number. Hi, Hi. Hi. Um, we've got a number of comments on the chat, Tembella. Can I go through the comments? Yes, please go ahead, Ricky. Um, well, um, the the basic sentiment on the chat is that um, is is really being grateful to Pindi and Jessica for being willing to be vulnerable and share these experiences, um, and then not just pointing out the deep trauma and pain, and I that's also something that I picked up because you can imagine if you are having these kinds of experiences or even have them once, you go through quite a bit of trauma, and so we carry this trauma of the experience and it, it, um, it affects how we engage going forward, right? So um, that was one of the key comments. Um, another comment was from Tame. She says that um, she believes women in power need to learn the difference between leadership and management roles. Um, and, and, and she's very grateful for the stories. And then Majeji has shared a story she said, one female boss was so annoying, she wouldn't take responsibility for anything and would, in, would dump important meetings on our laps at the 99th hour without preparing me. So it is important that we as women also take um, seats at the table. I like what Pindi said on the other hand about the politics of the stomach, that it is also what we got our government to its knees. That, that is also what got our governments to its knees in the past 10 years or so. Um, so those are the comments coming through on the chat. Um, what I'd like people to think about as we're listening to the stories is what are the behaviors that are coming through? Just taking from what Pindi and Jessica were saying, it's backstabbing, 
uh, its levels of complicity and different kinds of emotional violence, you know, that brings back to the shaming that Ndato was talking about last week. It's behavior that escalates to even physical violence. Um, it is the use of power to create a vi a, an environment that undermines and demeans. Um, so if we can be thinking about what are these behaviors so that as we go forward, we think about, we're able to think about how do we address such behavior when we're trying to, um, to collaborate with women? What do we need? What, what is the skill set we need to identify and address such behavior so that we can collaborate? Um, I see Ndato wanted to speak. Yeah, I'd just like to put my hand up here because um, I would be emotionally disheartened to sit in this call. And I think it's important to, to recognize so, that. Hello? Can you okay, start again? I said I would be sitting here and be emotionally dishonest, and I would challenge all of us to interrogate whether we have behaved in any of these ways um, ourselves. And in preparing for this session, I did a bit of research because when I was thinking about my own stories, I had a lot of stories of being the subject of guerrilla warfare from other women. Um, but I've also got my own stories where I have sabotaged and betrayed and bullied other women. And so one of the things that I, one of the frameworks that I like to use is, okay, unpack why these behaviors occur. And I think some of them start coming out in, in the two sets of stories. And when I was doing the research, essentially women operate in a competitive framework within the context of patriarchy. We are all socialized and conditioned to compete with one another. Um, I came across a very interesting um, term called a, the prisoner dilemma, right? The prisoner dilemma is that when women collectively spend their time, their energy, their resources competing against each other, they all collectively lose. And so in the context of power and privilege in a country, in societies, in families, in, in, in an economy, in workplaces, in an entrepreneurial environment where we're all coming in from the back foot, we come in with a certain set of behaviors. And the best story I can use for this is my two daughters. I have a four-year-old and a five-year-old. And I've already seen how they are conditioned to behave in some of the ways that Jessica and the other speaker were speaking about. And I'll give you an example. Women are socialized to be in equal relationships. So we function best when we're in relationships with flattened hierarchies. And when there's a threat of a state change in status, then things go wobbly. The second thing is we're socialized to be nice and avoid conflict. We, girls tend to engage in unstructured collaborative play, no rules, no designated leader, leaders. And the minute there's a change in hierarchy or status, that's where you see the con conflict coming out. I see it in my daughters. That's when you see girls saying, I'm not your friend. Suddenly friendships finish because the status has changed. The power relationship has, has changed. And so what women tend to do is they either quit a situation to avoid conflict or get into a power battle. Uh, and that's the guerrilla warfare part because very few of us are taught to negotiate and resolve conflict. We, we learn this as we get into the workforce and have to develop these competencies. And so a lot of us from a very young age have developed passive aggressive, indirect aggressive ways of managing each other through gossiping, forming cliques, bullying, exclusion, ridiculing, whatever you call it. And so by the time you compound that socialization with being in patriarchal environments where certain behaviors are incentivized, certain value systems are incentivized um, 
in the way that people interrelate with, with, one, with one another, in how they position themselves relative to the other. And then you can add, as our speakers have said, some form of trauma, some sort of interpersonal pathology or psychology. You compound all those three dynamics and it's just a hot mess. It's just a hot mess. So I can't sit here and say, I haven't been one of these women. I know I've been one of these women. I know I've participated in gossip. I know that I have had issues with other women when in my workplace, I have felt that it threatens my status or threatens my progression or threatens my standing in the, in the hierarchy. Granted, the older I become and the more secure in myself I become, it is easier to be a lot more self-conscious and to call yourself out and to recognize that how what someone else is invoking in you is not a reflection of them. It's some personal stuff in my case that you need to, that, uh, that, that, that needs to be addressed. Needless to say, that doesn't take away the fact that women can be subject to guerrilla warfare and sabotage by men and by women in their workplace, in their businesses, uh, in church. You don't have to go far. Any institution. <laughs> it can happen in. And so I, I think there's some personal responsibility that needs to be taken around really considering and framing what is the value system? What is the way that I've been taught to look at and see other women? Um, when am I comfortable with women? When do I become uncomfortable with women? And check ourselves and understand what it is that we're actually dealing with. Some of us might have that capability and the bandwidth. Others, like this poor lady who'd gone through the divorce and just became an a, a atom bomb in your eyes life, don't have the bandwidth for it. So I'll leave my, my contribution there. Thanks, thanks, Ndato. Uh, I, I think Ndato has already started um, the invitation, uh, I mean, uh, responding to the invitation that we've made, that uh, we actually just need to be vulnerable with one another. And uh, as, as I have said, this is not even um, uh, on, on, on Facebook Live. Um, we will actually probably look at another time uh, where we can actually share this on, on, on Facebook. But, but, but uh, again, it goes back to what uh, came up quite strongly last week that change starts with me. If we are talking about building collective power, it, it has to start with me. And, 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 and which is why today we actually said we just want to be vulnerable with one another. And, and I, I don't know whether there are any other people that that want to to come in them, but but uh, uh, oh, I see that uh, Ricky also wants to to come in, and I guess on on on, on the issue of vulnerability, I always say uh, every time I, I I look back at, at at my time when I was in in leadership, I always say I feel sorry for 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 the people that work with me in the sense that uh, I, I was actually quite young and I was, I was not well equipped, you know, like for the job that I was uh, doing. So because sometimes we get put into positions of power and then you don't have the actual support that, that you need that is going to actually help you to, to succeed. So sometimes you do things without necessarily being conscious of what is actually going on in you or, or sometimes when you find that you're not getting the support that you, you, you think you would be getting from, 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 from others, it actually doesn't come out so well. So, so uh, I don't know, Ricky, you want to say something? Um, thanks, Timbela. Just following on from what Ntato said, in as much as it's important for us to reflect on our own behaviors, and to be able to identify our negative behaviors. I also think it's important for us to reflect on our positive behaviors. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that was valuable about Nirai's story is although it's, a, I mean, my, my, eye, my <laughs> eyebrows were at the top of my head the whole time, although it's a traumatic and scary story to hear, there was also the underlying theme of the team that did work with her and that did mm -hmm. support her and that did step in for her. 
Um, and so if we're thinking about learning, we need to learn and we need to make visible that which is not working, but we also need to make visible that which is working um, so that we can build on what is working. Um, so the story, this terrible story that Nyarai is telling us also has a whole counter story about how a team got together and managed to support her personally, work through the compromises to make the work happen, collaborate and stand up for her, all of those things. Um, and in examining the positive as well as the negative, in that place we can find a lot of the answers of um, how to address what doesn't work and how to work with what we already know and what we already do um, to work well in teams and to work well with other women. Um, I, Pindi wants to speak. Pindi, are you still up for speaking? Yes, yes, Ruki. Um, you've, you've actually touched on what I wanted to, to add, to say that and, and perhaps sometimes we are too hard on ourselves as women and we put quite a big spotlight on what we do. When I spoke, I, I said that I've experienced some of these things both with men and with women. But somehow when we experience it with men, it's, it's not it's almost like it's expected to be like that. It's almost like it's accepted to be the norm. But when, they, when it's a woman that behaves in this particular manner, it's, 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 it's in, your, in the spotlight and it's so bad. And it, it does not take away from the fact that it's not right and we need to correct it. But perhaps the yardstick that we use to measure behavior in the workplace, men versus women, maybe it's different. I wanted to touch on the positive side of, of what, how, when it can work well, actually. And, and I wanted to say that the positions where I really thrived at work as a leader were actually when I had, I had one team of about 10 managers, I think more, more, more or less, reporting to me with only one gentleman. And we worked so well together. We worked so well. And, and just because we, we were able to, to be real and authentic with each other. And most importantly, no, no, no hidden agendas and things of wanting to talk a lot. Because from the onset, we're actually very clear that, listen, in this team, you are free to do what you want to do. You want to leave, you don't need to be dodgy about it. You, you can come and tell me, I'm not happy about X, Y, Z. I want to leave, I will help you leave. And, and, and so there's, there's no reason and there's no need for people to have these hidden agendas that they should feel, I must talk behind you, I must do whatever. In, in the same breath, I've also had very difficult relationships reporting to men. Um, the, and I thought, let me perhaps add a bit of color, because Miranda said I didn't share much about about my experience so let let me add a bit of color and maybe be more um specific i said i reported to two women where i had these issues the one i can't i was quite junior still then and i i can't even put a finger on it except to say maybe this person was a bit schizophrenic to be honest and and um yeah so and that's what she brought to work and and unfortunately, for her, nobody really um, rallied with her, or even tried to, or even tried to uh, support her, or suck up to her, or if I can use that language, whatever. And not too long after that, she actually exited the organization. The recent one is 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 an area where you you walk, you are new to an institution, and and unfortunately, both of them. Okay, this one was not a schizophrenia case. It was just a pure case of someone that their sense of worth was so, so low and so chronic to the point that everything and anything that happened 
was about her. So probably somewhere in the earlier life, she was told that she's not worth anything. She could never be like she, she could never be good at anything. And so her whole career is is based on a quest to prove I am good, I am very good at this, and I can be better than anybody else, right? I'm I'm better than anybody else. So anything you did, her standards were out of out of the scale. But you then add to that an element of cruelty. You, you, you add an element of, of malice, malicious intent in the worst possible you can think of. This is someone that looked at, in, in her eyes, nobody could be competent in her team. In fact, nobody was competent, except I, I remembered this as we were speaking, Jessica, about uh, this black woman thinking that the white woman is the you know, is a breath of fresh air, if I can put it that way, while you were actually doing the work behind the scenes. This particular woman of mine, in her eyes only, actually, a white male could be competent. So irrespective of whatever you tried and whatever you did, she would accept it or tolerate it because work needs to continue. But I remember one particular time we, we advertised for some position and it, it, I mean, you had good, competent, quite qualified black women and men for that matter on, on the shortlist. And she would find one single thing where she could say, no, this person is, she's not stable because she's been jumping around from this position to that and whatever, and, and therefore find a reason to discount them. Fortunately for me, I, I had realized that that's the issue here. And I proactively did references on all these people. I did specific references on the white males and they came back negative. So when she was like, oh no, none of these people, except for this white gentleman. I was like, well, unfortunately, here's the reference you have on this white gentleman and it doesn't look good, right? And she, then she'd rather say, no, then let's go back to the market because I don't want to have to appoint these black people even though she will not um, put it out like that. But the, the levels of cruelty, I thought, surely you can't, I mean, she, she viewed people as rubbish. She, she viewed them, all their work for is to be thrown to the dustbin. I, re I remember one time, one of my colleagues said she felt sick and she was not okay. And she was like, I hope they get sick permanently. <laughs> so it, it was that bad. And, and so any platform, anything you said, if, if I stood there and I said, this is the report for my division that I'm presenting, uh, the next thing is like, oh, you were talking about me. I am popular in this institution. You, you can't say anything about me. And when, is, when, it, when it really is at that chronic level, you, you can't, like you can't help this person. Okay, and all you need then is the institution to acknowledge the fact that we have a problem in this person, especially if Pindiwe is not the first person to complain about this person. You've got two previous cases of people that have landed in, in institutional, um, what, wellness or mental institutions or are taking medication because of the exposure they've had to this person. And then, and as an institution, you want to still sit back and say, Pindue is new. Is it because she's struggling to adjust to the new environment? Or is it because she's not performing? Because they will always try and spin this thing of, no, she's not performing, right? Or, but then you say, you've been sitting with this person for all these days. You have this and that in that case. Surely, this should tell you, this is not about a Pindue, right? But then you find that there isn't enough political will or leadership will to deal with, the, with this issue because probably the person is also such a strong personality, a strong character that they'll challenge anybody and, and take them to the cleaners if they can because they have the ability to be meticulous about collecting data against you and making sure they can build up a case that will say, oh, then this person needs to go. 
unfortunately, yeah, in my case, eventually I left and she left also <laughs> immediately after that because uh, then somewhere at some point, someone saw that surely this is not right. They, there's something wrong with the situation. And sadly, so to say, unfortunately, also she then eventually passed away. So that's my, my story without also giving out too much else. Th 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 thank you, Pindi, um, uh, for, for, for bringing a bit of um, flavor into the, the story so that we can understand what you are talking about. And, and I can see uh, again uh, on, the, on the chat, I'm not sure, be, before we go into trying to make sense, because I, I see that we actually, uh, my goodness, I didn't realize that we've moved. Uh, I mean, time has moved so quickly. I, I, I think the question for me is, um, when we listen to these stories and perhaps also some of the things that are coming up on, um, on, on, on the chat, are, are, are the are the assumptions that we are, and, and, and belief system that we're hearing, uh, are the patterns um, that, that we are hearing, and, and what's actually beneath uh, what we are, I mean, the experiences that we, 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 we are talking about, which we have heard about from uh, um, the people who have shared, but also that we have also gone through um, ourselves and perhaps haven't had the chance to talk about. So what do we think are, I mean, is behind or are the drivers of the kind of behaviors that we are talking about here today? Can I invite us to just dig a little bit deeper to try and understand what is behind? Because like as I was saying earlier, that it is very easy to just point fingers and say this person is bad or this person is like this. But, but, but for us to actually move to a point where we can actually say, I am happy or I am more confident to step up and collaborate with others, we need to understand uh, what are those things that make it hard for us? Uh, like what's behind what we see? Uh, Jess, you, I see your hand is up. So my hand was up before you asked the question. So I don't know whether to answer the question or address what I wanted to address earlier. So I'll try and just voice, I'm sorry if I don't answer what you're asking. Um, for me, the moving forward that I wanted to, to, to just share and highlight is that for me, the most important thing is what I shared is just the realities are we all bring our baggages in whatever engagement that we do. That, that's a fact. And we, the main important thing for me is one ought to understand and be self-aware like we've been speaking about. But you also need to read your environment. You need to understand what's happening. And then you need to formulate a strategy that is required for that moment. So what I'm trying to say is there will always be traumas. There will always be bombshells everywhere you go. This is about how do you navigate. I, I hope that when we finish here, what you should take away from what I shared was that it was about we had a goal. We, and I mean, at the end of the day, I'm running a business and it is um, a very big contract and a very long-term potential that we wanted to. So we've always been very clear strategically, this is what we want to do. But in doing that, and because of the common values and the partners that I have, it was how do we deal with that? The other things, as they were happening, we were naming them to say, this is painful. So for example, when I went and prayed, they stepped in because they know that's how I deal with things. You know, my one partner who logically goes into, where's the lawyer? Let's do this. Let's do this. That's what she does. So everyone play goes into their in role, but in the way we dealt with it, it was to say, guys, remember, this is a client. This is where we're wanting to get to. So what I'm trying to say is one ought to be very clear. So if you walk into a situation we, I find that a lot of women do not, they don't read their situation. Like Ntato said, it's a, it's, a, it's a political game. Whether you wanna participate in it or not, it is happening. Then have the strategy, uh, enable yourself with the right strategies in how you maneuver your way to that. You cannot solve all problems at the same time, but you simply have to choose what is it that you have to deal with at that point, deal it and move on. Yes, 
in my situation, it wasn't just me. I mean, I have my people that were supporting. I had one resource as a business analyst who who actually, um, we had to get a, 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 a psychologist to help her. And we actually moved her out of sight after that one of the people that were marched out, you know? So those were interventions that we put in place to say, what do we do to deal with these things? We cannot prevent it. We know that this person has these issues, but we named it and we dealt it and maneuvered through that. And that's the thing that I want us to take away, or at least to just remember that we will, we, we will always go through things, but let's, man let's manage them accordingly. Thanks. Uh, thanks, 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 Jess. I think that's actually quite important. And again, it connects to what we're talking about. Let's be, be clear about why. Okay, let's, let's mute uh, Nandi. Okay. So I, I think being clear, <laughs> being clear about your, your goal, uh, I think that's actually quite an important thing to, to take away. Can I ask the people who are uh unmuted to mute themselves okay so ricky your hand is up i don't know who else uh, who, who else has got their hand up um thanks timbella i wanted to reflect a little bit on when you say what are the underlying issues so in thinking about my own stories one of the things i realized is that i do carry baggage um one of the things that i realize is you come to realize are you a fight or flight person mm. right and what you do you tend to do is it impacts on further situations in your life the 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 the, the, the experiences that you've had the negative experiences they impact on how you deal with other experiences going forward mm. um and so the thing that was beautiful about the story that um, Jessica shared was that, pros that, that processing, that working it through for yourself and, mm -hmm. and finding a place of power for yourself. Um, I think that it is important when we're thinking about this to think about how to have my experiences defined my behavior. Um, and Nato was talking about how generally women are conflict averse and so they stay away and out of conflict situations. And I think that that is a big reason why um, our survey last week showed that women um, are willing to collaborate, but don't collaborate. And the reason they don't is because you conflict averse. You, you know that they, when you have to collaborate, you're creating the situation where conflict can arise. Um, and so that's one of the things I think we need to think very carefully about how we're conditioned to be conflict averse and what, what is the way to frame the environment in a way that we feel safe to collaborate. Uh, Pindi was giving some very good advice on, she said, you, you, you set your boundaries, you set your values. She said her team that worked well, she up front, they had a very clear discussion on the environment and the, the boundaries on, on which they were going to engage. So that's a really important and valuable lesson for us um, on how we can overcome that kind of conflict aversion that stops us from collaborating. Uh, Ricky, I missed a lot of what you said. I, I think I was off a little bit. Um, so so, so uh, I'm, I'm going to be like a fool and go back to I'm, I'm hoping that other people have heard you <laughs> in terms of I mean, what you were saying. So I'll just go back to saying, uh, again, let's continue the, 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 the journey of trying to dig uh, uh, what, what are those underlying drivers. So I think one of the specific clear questions that we had was, um, what are the myths that uh, we have bought into that make it difficult for us to collaborate. We've had uh, difficult stories today um, of, of where, where we found it so hard to collaborate amongst ourselves. So what are those myths? Uh, and I think um, that, that we might have actually bought into that make it difficult for us to collaborate. And I think that was raising a, a different question in terms of saying, how have we been um, shaped? Uh, so, so, so if we look at ourselves, how have we been shaped to look at each other as women? 
uh, so that we actually show up with each other the way that we are. Uh, can I invite some of the people that are writing on chat to actually share in this platform too? I mean, just speak up, unmute yourself and speak up. So you've been writing a lot. <laughs> ah, Tambela, unfortunately today I'm in an environment where I can't really chat. Okay. Sorry. That's fine. Are um, the people who want to come up? What? Yes. Hello. Oh, Can I say something? Okay. Go ahead, Helga. Uh, thank you so much, ladies. I'm so inspired to hear all your stories. And uh, for the rest who doesn't know me, I'm Helga Buri. Um, in South Sudan, in Juba. I hope you guys will know where South Sudan is. Uh, I have just a small story to tell, um, also related to women. When I was back in university, um, I was the chairperson of the Students' Association. So the women group, there was a women group that contacted me and say, hey, we want you to join us and they sent me to go and attend a conference on their behalf, even when I don't know anything about the group. So I had to go represent them in another country. And I brought back the report with the funds. I gave them the money. I was so young, didn't know all this dynamic. So in the process, what I realized in that women group was that um, the fact that they're working on one agenda, and their agenda was they were lobbying so that peace will come in South Sudan. So they were a lobby group of women. But the fact that they were a lobby group, among themselves, they are forever fighting. Forever fighting, they're forever gossiping against each other. And, and I was still young trying to, be, to learn and be a leader in future just like them. But I keep see, seeing all these funny things they were doing. Um, and then they had this one young uh, guy who will always advise them on things around uh, politics. So um, at the end, I had to leave them for one reason. So the guy came to me and said to me, you know what, Helda, if you want to be something in this group, you need to bring to them information. And that is like you bring gossip, give it to them, and then they will like you. They will, they will take you up and you'll go to the next level. So I said to him, okay, if that is the way of how I'm going to be a strong woman in future, I just decided to run away. I ran away from the group. And then uh, when the country separated, those group of women, uh, they lost the vision. Uh, they took up positions in the government, some are ministers, others are in the parliament. But I just decided to, to go back to, to my humble beginnings and find my own. And the reason why I want to share is that, yes, women are strong together, but sometimes they, they, when they don't feel safe, like just the way I put it in the chat, they start behaving in a different way. They can even have a revenge against um, other women and they don't know that they have a common agenda and they have one uh, purpose in, in their life. Um, uh, Pindi, if you may allow me, having worked with Pindi, she was my boss and I'm happy that she's sharing her experience. Uh, uh, today I am head of HR. I would have not been in this position if it was not for Pindi. And really, I want to give you back uh, the honor to say thank you so much. You, you have changed me. Uh, we have worked together. Yes, we'll fight. We will come back again tomorrow and pick up and say, you know what? We have this thing. We have to do it. We'll advise each other. Over all these years, is now, I don't know, 10 years or so, but we still have that strong relationship because uh, we realize that with our struggle, we can actually come out to be something. And I, I'm proud that 
uh, she's still standing there. She's still um, inspiring other women. And, and basically, it's important that if we are leaders today, we shouldn't do the bad things that other people has done to us, to other fellow women. And this is the decision I took long time ago to say, you know what, if somebody has punished me for some reason or the other, I shouldn't do it to another one, especially if they are women. I shouldn't do to them the same thing that someone else has done to me. The only way is for me to be the change and inspire them so that they will be better women, they will be able to protect themselves. So I think that is just briefly from, uh, from my side, but thank you so much. This is an inspiring uh, conversation. Thanks, Helga. I think you're raising another issue there, the issue of safety. And I think that uh, Tato has also raised that earlier, that sometimes when we feel threatened, uh, when we don't feel safe, uh, the context in which we work uh, sometimes might actually work against us so that instead of seeing each other as allies, uh, we actually see each other as uh, competitors. So those are some of the things that I think I'm, I'm, I'm hearing. And I understand that um, Tato's hand is up. Thanks, Tembela. Um, I, I wanted to just make two comments. I think the first one is related to um, both, both uh, Nirai and Pindi. And what I'm hearing out of both of their stories is around that victim versus player mindset. And, um, and in both cases, speaking to some of the elements of a player mindset. And, and what these are, the mindsets that describe whether you're defensive or opening or open, the attitude of defensiveness or openness that you take, or you adopt in a difficult situation or a situation that's out of your control. And both, so most people would have an, an option, a choice. In a situation that's out of my control, difficult situation, do I become a victim? Do I become a player? Uh, the victim mindset is gravitating towards maintaining one's self-esteem and avoiding viewing ourselves as part of the problem. Whereas a, a, a player mindset is based on taking responsibility and doing your best to influence the best outcomes. And I see this in both of the stories. Um, the other point I wanted to make was about unconscious bias. And on the chat, I had put a, a story where I had had a female leader I was working with who just, we couldn't get along until I quit. And her issue was, she said I was a sort of woman, woman her, her husband would have an affair with. Never knew the man in my life, okay? But the point is, the point is that many of us are walking around with some form of bias towards human beings, towards other women. It could be class, it could be age, it can be level of education, it can be urban versus rural, it can be uh, which school you went to. And that self-awareness, because that's pretty much all we have is our self-awareness of what are the biases that I am walking around with um, becomes really important to being able to be a player in this world which is contested and complex and as Nirai says, is always gonna be contested and complex. Um, and I mean, it, it's very vulnerable for me to sit on this platform and say, I know I've been one of these uh, guerrilla warfare women. It's also very vulnerable for me to say, I know I've been one of these women with unconscious biases. And I had to take a test on unconscious bias to actually find out I had unconscious bias. Because I thought, because I'm a black woman, what bias can I have? I'm dealing with everybody else's biases. Until I took an unconscious bias test and I got the shock of my life about what my unconscious biases are. So they are tools and there are ways that we can enhance, in my view, our self-awareness um, so that as we maneuver and navigate, as you eloquently say in your eye, through these difficult and contested terrains, we do so with self-awareness. That, that, that's actually quite a, a, a helpful thing because that, that self-awareness is actually something that is um, uh, 
I, I think it, it's, it's really who like to talk about um, the what, what are these uh, when you can't actually see beyond Rick, what you call that. Um, uh, so, so sometimes we, we look at one point at, at one side and we actually don't see what is actually happening on the other side. So that, that whole thing of actually trying to understand what's happening within us, that is actually making me to show up the way that I am showing up. And I think for us, one of the, one of the questions we actually had, and I'm glad that you're actually raising that in fact, was a question of actually looking, of, of asking ourselves uh, questions as to what are the assumptions that I'm making about other women? What are the assumptions that I'm making about myself? Uh, what are the belief systems that I've actually bought into that I actually need to, um, to drop? But, but also the question of like, uh, once I'm aware, uh, what is it that I'm actually, uh, I actually need to do to help me, you know, like or, uh, or the help that I need, the things that I need to do to help me collaborate more or at least to build that confidence to collaborate more with, um, with, with other people. So I think the issue of self-awareness is quite an important one because before, again, before we can talk about collaboration with other women, we actually need to look at ourselves, what's happening around here. Because if I'm not aware of those unconscious biases, if I'm not aware as well of my own values, it makes it very difficult for me to actually collaborate more with um, other people. Um, I see uh, on, on, on the chat we have people who are say, uh, Lukani is saying, can you please provide an example of a good unconscious bias test in Tato? So perhaps you could actually share uh, some information on, on, on that. What, even, if you don't have, even if you don't share that now, perhaps uh, later and we can share it in the group as well. Sure. Um, I'll find the, the, I find it and, and send it through the network to you. Okay, great. Ntato, I think we, because of the time, we are not going to go to the other questions that we had actually prepared uh, for us, uh, I mean, uh, to, to discuss in this uh, discussion today. But I'm actually wondering, I mean, you've had right from the beginning to where we are right now. I'm, I'm, I'm actually uh, wanting to invite you to try and talk to us about what you are hearing and perhaps the closing uh, arguments that you want to bring to help us. Uh, because next week we are moving away from this discussion around uh, uh, women, you know, being allies with one another. Sure. So if I can just wrap up what we heard from today, I think um, we spoke about how you get both empowering and disempowering female and male relationships in the workplace um, and that a woman can be sabotaged by both men and by female. So some of the behaviors we speak about are belittling, humiliation, shaming, embarrassment, even the queen bee syndrome. Um, but that sabotage in itself can come from many places. It can come from the politics of the stomach. It can come from the personal and private vulnerabilities of people where their trauma is playing out in the workplace. It can come from people who are not self-aware um, and who are not conscious of their biases. Um, and those biases they have can be biases towards people who look exactly the way they look, right? And be exactly the way they are. Uh, we also spoke about how uh, you can get irrational power play and the inability to read the room and navigate positional power when power is, is, um, when power is used to undermine and to demean. And, and therefore that speaks to the need for us to understand that it's important to read the room. It's important to understand the context within which we're operating and engage that context from a strategic position, a deliberate strategic position. So you know, you're clear about your goal, you read your environment, you formulate your strategy to not navigate and maneuver uh, through this. Um, because the challenges around um, conflict between women or the inability to collaborate between women is not anything that's going to go away uh, anytime soon. I think what also came out is that um, the impact of the inability to collaborate can be violent and sabotage can be violent and it can be demeaning uh, and it, it can impact the spiritual emotional body of somebody, including their pain body, and trigger stuff 
their own unresolved stuff um, in some cases. Um, I think it, it was also clear that um, it, it might be important to suspend judgment and not internalize the experiences that we have. So there's something about um, being having that level of self-awareness to differentiate between what belongs to somebody else vis-a-vis -vis what's yours. You know that saying where it says, it's not what you're called, it's what you answer to. And so when we are in these experiences, it doesn't, we don't have to take them, we don't have to internalize them. And there are mechanisms and means, I think, to, to deal with the shock of those experiences in a way that we can manage and to mitigate internalization. Uh, Jessica spoke about things such as prayer. She also spoke about the importance of having strong teams around you that can buffer you. I think Pindi also spoke about the importance of having strong teams where you set the value system and the boundaries uh, up front. So Spindi also raised something very important about um, sometimes these things exist because there's no political will in institutions to deal with toxic people uh, because toxic people are usually the ones who, who are experienced in, in uh, really being able to maneuver through an organization by having a lot of dirt uh, on others and manipulating their way through the system. Um, I, I also think there was a, the, finally, there was a, the, a, a conversation around um, the difference, it came up online, the difference between leadership and management roles. But uh, you yourself, Timbela, raised that sometimes people, we do get put into positions we're not ready for, we're not prepared for, we either don't have the proper skills, the leadership competencies, or even the emotion and intelligence to deal with the pressures and the dynamics that come with those roles. And so um, there's something to be said also about self-awareness and being in an environment which can recognize what the gap is from a, from a development perspective and be able to, to, to fill that gap. I think um, I, I'll just wrap up with uh, the point that Ricky made around the importance of having these conversations and processing the negative experiences and the pain, which I think evokes a lot of trauma in people, but the importance of having the conversation and speaking about the empowering uh, spaces, the empowering experience, but also what has worked, not just what has not worked, so that we can learn from, um, so that we can learn from what has worked um, as well. Um, and then finally, I think there's something to be said about understanding how our conditioning plays out. Childhood conditioning plays out in how we are as women. Um, and whether or not we are aware and conscious of, of the ways that conditioning formulates how we interface with other women in our environments from a position of power or influence or relationship, uh, et cetera. Uh, so I'll just leave that there. Ntato, thank you so much for that. I'm, I'm going to call Ricky um, to, 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 to close us off. But I must say, we have a poll. Um, we, are, we are not going to read the poll today, but we're just inviting you to please take a moment before you run off to actually just answer a very simple few questions. But, but, but before I call in um, Ricky, I... Again, I have this thing of, I'm, I'm not sure whether you are actually sensing this. Um, so when we started, we invited a level of vulnerability and, uh, uh, amongst us. And I actually think we, we, we did that. And, and I'm actually feeling it in my body <laughs> because somehow you, you, you're sitting with this tension of you, you want to hear beautiful stories. And, and, and the reality is that we don't, I mean, we, you, I think Ntato keep on, and, and I think uh, Ricky as well had said that we, we carry baggage, you know, and then and, and, and sometimes because we're carrying this baggage, when we actually surface it, it's not easy to look at it uh, because we're actually looking at ourselves and, and, and that's one of the way of healing ourselves as women to help us actually move forward. Uh, so, so Ntato, thank you so much for, for 
for actually bringing up those issues so so nicely and 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 it's uh, one of the tools i always like uh, using is a, uh, when we talk about some of these things is a, we call it four dimensions of change where we when we look at our situations we don't just look at um, one lens but we actually look at what is happening at an individual level what is happening between our relationships what's happening like in terms of uh, the organizational systems and structures and um, what's happening um, uh, with, 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 with our culture and how have all these things shaped the person that is actually showing up uh, today and how is that um, impacting for instance for today? How is all of this impacting on the way in which we collaborate or fail to collaborate um, as women? And I think on that note, I want to just bring in uh, Ricky. Thanks, Tembella. Um, I want to start by saying thank you so much to Jessica and Pindi for sharing your stories so openly, um, for being willing to go back into those experiences. I too am feeling it in my body, the tension, um, because I've also had those experiences and that's why we use storytelling, because it is something affirming about hearing your own experiences from somewhere else. So when you hear that, oh, it's not me alone, it, um, it allows you to, um, to, to process and it allows you to be forgiving of yourself um, and to be forgiving of others for the situations that we have found ourselves in. So I really want to thank um, um, the, the people who shared their stories today, including the people who shared on the chat, because I know it's not easy to go back into those situations. Um, I also wanted to thank Ntato for tying it all up for us and, and, and drawing this beautiful thread of gold between last week's session and this week's session. And you know, we named this session Unfinished Business because um, I don't think we finished the business today. Um, but it is giving us an idea, that title, that it is a lot of work that has to be done to enable collaboration between women in the workplace. Um, and we have gone into so into much more depth on the consciousness that is required at the individual level, on, um, on, on the compromise that is required at the relational level and on the deep consciousness that's required at the systemic level. What I want to remind everybody is what Ntato talked about, that in the end, we're all stuck in the prisoner dilemma. So the big why is why we must collaborate, is we're all stuck in the prisoner dilemma. Without collaboration, um, we can't get out of a situation where women are undermined and are not um, and able to be authentic and, and thrive in the workplace, um, which is why we have these discussions, which is why we try to find these answers, which is why we try to build the systems to enable collaboration going forward. Um, so we will continue to have these discussions. Our plan and aim for next week's discussion is to actually look at that area that people began referring to today, the area of co collaborating with male colleagues or um, male seniors. And we're going to have a male speaker whom we can ask all our hard questions and talk <laughs> to about what are the challenges and difficulties. So we're gonna get that inside perspective on why it is difficult or challenging or, or works well to collaborate with men. Um, that's what we're going to be doing in our reimagine session next week. Um, and just to remind you that we will have our Mellow Monday session on Monday, uh, where we will work out all the tension in our bodies. Um, and I hope that we won't be carrying the tension from today all the way till Monday. Um, we've been sharing a lot of useful tools and tips, so people can definitely take the time to stretch um, and do some Qigong after this session today. Um, with that, I want to say thank you, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for sharing with us um, uh, and, and, and for being part of this extensive discussion. Yeah, so that's our goodbyes. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, please do check. If you do not have, if you are not in our WhatsApp group, please leave your number because you need to find a way of checking off this tension so that we can actually send you those exercises that uh, Ricky is actually talking about. Yeah, so yeah.
uh, bye and yeah bye uh, yeah, somebody wanted to yes yeah thank you so much people thank you so much for your vulnerability and for answering the poll thank you Thank you. Bye. So, the way that we wish to first to make it to like the middle of the center, and go to the person manager, put in place all of us to give you the access information, and give you also to be able to give us to the point in the road which will regulate your conduct. Yeah. Um, Ricky, I hope you will not run away quickly. I mean, just five minutes. And share. I'm, I'm still here, Tambela. I um. Okay. I, I literally have five minutes because the girls have a karate session at half past six. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. I, let me just share. The, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll take a photo of the, of the poll. My goodness. Heavy session. Mm. Very. My entire body is like. No? Nah? Mm. In fact, there was a time where I actually felt like I'm, I'm melting. It's, it's really heavy. I know that um, it's a space that we need to go to, but it's not an easy one. Yeah. Hello, baby. Sure. She just woke You've up. You've been quiet. Yeah, I thought we would just give space for people to speak because I think like we took up that space we took away from others. Um, I, yeah, I agree. It's, uh, I think also because when you hear these stories, you okay, sorry, sorry. sorry, darling. So I think, yeah, I think you feel others pain. So you kind of relive that, that trauma mm. and, and, um, yeah. And I think, I also think that when you hear someone else's story, it triggers your own stories. So for a moment you revisit pain that you might have or might have even worked through, but it's still a place you go back to. And so I think definitely there's work for us to do in terms of thinking how do we help women navigate through this? Because I saw that a few people jumped off during the course of it. And I mean, I mean, oh, for it? connectivity and, and anything. But I mean, I think the other thing is that it could also just be that sometimes when things get heavy, you just want to exit. Mm. Mm. That discomfort. And maybe that's the other thing is to say that it's that person's problem. It's not mine. So I don't yeah. want to stick with it. But in sitting with it, you also can find healing and solutions. And I think that's the other thing about mm. the workplace, right? Like, it's easy for me to say, oh, that's the key's problem. She'll figure it out. Mm. I'll just text me for now and so how do we get better at uh, sitting in discomfort and how do we support each other during times of vulnerability because jumping off a call is not so, um, <laughs> is, yeah is there anything that you could like for instance in terms of what you are saying uh, of, of course it's going to be difficult because like the the platform that we're using is not a paid platform so you don't even know who's in and who's out you only see the names here. Yeah. And, and I think the question for me is, I mean, if we are feeling this way, you can imagine how other people are actually feeling. And I think for me, the question is, how, how do you work with that? Uh, perhaps it's one of the, we probably don't need to answer that question now because Ricky has to go. But I think it's one of the things that we, we need to be thinking about in terms of saying, when we feel this happiness, how do we manage it in, 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 in the in the session so that also people don't leave on that you With know that. heavy note yeah, yeah. Okay. um well 
Sorry, Shay. Um, can I just say that I think it's important for us to put uh, a breathing or stretch exercise on the group, like as soon as possible. Is it is it possible? Is it something that is possible for you to do, Tembella? You mean now? Yeah. Mm. Unfortunately, yeah. I've got like dinner and what. Um, so, is it possible that we do it now, so that even yes. if they're not going to do it now, they they know that it's there. Um, and then I, I do think it is quite easy to integrate that into our, into our sessions. Um, what we mm. need to do is have the video ready so that when we are picking up that heaviness, we literally say, because that's what I would do in a physical session. If yeah. we were face to face, I would say, there's a lot of heaviness. Let's stand up. Let's just yeah. breathe. And I would do an exercise that would shift the energy a little bit. So having yeah. those little things ready for online is, yeah. is wonderful. Um, I yeah. want to reflect that I thought it was a really good session. And even though we didn't ask the questions that we wanted to ask, we got to all the places we wanted to get to. Those questions mm. were answered um, in, in many ways. And it was a rich session. Um, I, for me, mm. I see it as a session that was rich enough for us to be able to craft a very clear mm. kind of session and, and know what, what are the issues and topics we, you know, content issues and topics we want to cover and um, uh, exercises we want to put in place. So it was a mm. great, great session. Yeah, thank you. Um, and I know it was hard, but it was a great session. Mm. Thank you, Ricky. Thank you. I actually think I need to hear that because I am really feeling happy. I think we can do the, 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 the 10, uh, I can propose to people who want to do the 10 minute, uh, what did you call she? What did you call it? Qigong. Sh Qigong. Qigong. Yeah, session. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think I can easily just pull that because I mean, it's there. So just to say those people who want to, uh, uh, and then I post the free, I mean, the, the password where people don't need to, to actually join in. I mean, if somebody wants it, because for me, I know I need it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. thank you, Ricky. Thank you, Cher. Uh, I will just take a photo of this post. Cher, you wanted to say something? No, no, I'm saying, no, I'm saying cool. Yeah, the stories were great. The stories yeah, were deep. I think next week is going to be just as heavy. Um, so I much. think having male energy in the space is going to be different. Um, and, and I think in, in some ways triggering. So, mm. Okay, so we'll, so it means we, we, we definitely need to bring those short exercises and whatever and the stop and whatever that will not take a, a lot of time. So I'll, I'll try and see if I can find some that are very short, two minutes or whatever. Okay, do you see the karate suit? Please let me go. <laughs> let me just share this result so I can take the photos and we don't lose it. <laughs> okay, okay, so I'm gonna go off um, and we can schedule um, a deep brief if we need. Um, do we have photos of these? People I, were I saying that they were struggling. People were saying yeah, that they I were see. struggling to access the poll. Yeah. They said, yeah, I think they were not able to move to the next question from number three. Yeah. Well, from and number two, there are quite a number of people who have responded. Yeah. All right. All right. Let okay. me go, guys. Um, we will talk on, on, the, on the WhatsApp group. Okay. Thanks, Ricky. Thanks, thanks so much. Thanks, Shay. Thanks, Tembella. Okay. Bye. I took it and I put it in the chat. Oh, you have? Yeah, I put it in the chat. Okay. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, I hate it. Huh? It's heavy. Yeah, it is actually interesting because you feel it in your whole body. I think, though, I can't hear you. I think there's something to be done about teaching women to deal with this kind of trauma. Because <laughs> mm. you yeah. see, like, even though people say I've worked through it, you can see they haven't worked through it. Mm. And then that's another question to ask ourselves. Like, why do we say that? Why do we tell ourselves we're over it when we're not over it? 
you know, like, um, we don't like, want to, we, we don't want to be seen to be weak. And is it not that? I, I, I don't, I don't know. Like, what is the story I'm telling myself? Like, do you remember that whole thing with Desiree was so traumatic for me. Mm, I remember. I, I spoke to everybody about it. And not until you and I could also just have that open discussion with Monley and say, we won't do this work if we're going to feel devalued. Mm. And because, okay, because you were brave enough to have that conversation on our behalf, we could navigate that space well and we managed to finish our work well. But... So for me, it's, that in itself was liberating because, you know, we mm. still we did amazing work. Even there, her own team came back and told us that. But mm. I, think, I think for a lot of women, there's no place to actually understand how do I navigate this? Even if I sit with this trauma, how do I, you know, having wine with your friends sometimes is not healing. It, yeah. It's nice to point out but it's not necessarily healing. And so maybe there's something for us to think about. How do we teach women? One, how to, like, you know, right now we're teaching you how to identify with it. We're teaching you ways in which to deal with it. But when you do go through it, what are you doing in order to deal with the, the inner trauma? Because mm. it's that hurt that you don't work through. Then the next time you meet a woman to safeguard yourself, you behave in that same way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you perpetuate that cycle purely because you haven't learned to sit with yourself and help yourself heal. And so I think that's, for me, that's really critical. Even about, like, if it's about self-confidence, if it's about um, insecurities, how do I sit with myself? Or how do I find someone I can sit with and talk through that and say, you know what, she has an MBA and I don't, and it makes me feel mm. less. And then someone needs to say, okay, so what do you want to do about that? And I mean, you and I both know that's a coaching conversation, right? Mm, it is. It actually is. Do you want to sign up for your MBA? Do you understand that you have expertise that is worth her MBA? Do you understand that MBA is just some letters? And oh, that wait, wait, you? wait. I want to see if this thing is recording. Huh? It's not on Facebook. <laughs> no, no, is it is it recording? It's recording, yeah. Oh no, we need we need to cut it. We need to cut this last part of the discussion. Please remind me to do that uh, so I don't send it to 